This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. Welcome, welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Chicago. This is Chicago. Doors open on the left at Chicago. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Chicago. Coming from the 606 Media Studios. This is the TCSF Podcast with Big Z. Episode 201 is brought to you by 606 Media. True Chicago sports fans. Don't forget to go to gritclothingco.com and get your official TCSF podcast t-shirt. Search for keyword True Chicago and use our promo code TrueFan15 for 15% off your entire order. That is TrueFan15. Go and get your shirts now. And if you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, or the X, hit that subscribe button, hit that uh, star button, hit that favor button. And uh, if you're on the podcast app, uh, listening to us on Tuesday morning, remember to give us a five-star review and put some nice words in for us. It'll help us on the charts and shoot us right up. Uh, remember, you can also support the show with the monthly subscription at anchor.fm backslash true Chicago sports fans. Go over there and hit that uh, support button and subscribe for as little as 99 cents. Episode 201 in this live episode, we got a whoa, we dropped somebody off. We've got a litany of guests, for former co host, and just taking a hiatus, he'll be back soon. And uh, always, we got Stevie B, and looks like Mike Logic will be with us in a moment. Uh, we got the Chicago Bulls with more wrap up on the trade and the signing of a couple of players. We got Chicago baseball, uh, the Cubs losing the sausage series in Milwaukee. Is it time to sell Chicago? Uh, <laughs> the Sox win a series at home while fielding calls on a fire sale and what will stir in a pot be. But uh, before we get into all that, let's introduce our guest this week. We got Stevie B uh, from No Water in a Weekend podcast, and we got one of the original OGs, E-Rock in the house. What up, gentlemen? What's up? What's up? How's it going? It's going great. What up, E-Rock? What's going on, brother? Hey, first and foremost, I want to say this. 200 episodes is a big thing. I wasn't able to be Power probably the last 40 or so, but uh a lot of softball. I gotta say <laughs> a lot of softball, a lot of tournaments. I'm talking about like seven games a weekend type stuff. So that's the reason you haven't seen me on here. That's the reason, like uh, you know, you haven't been able to hear the dulcet tones of one E Rock over here, uh annoying you on your uh, drive in the morning or your drive on the way home or your morning jog or whatever it is. But uh happy to be here for this episode. I wore this uh very tight uh Derek Rose jersey and a hat for y'all. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you that right now. But uh but yeah, I'm excited to be on here talk about uh, what's going on with these bulls. That's right. Let's bring in Mike Logic. All right, I'm gonna adjust this while Mike Logic, welcome Mike Logic to the show and uh while I'm making an adjustment. Uh Mike, how you been, brother? What's going on, guys? How's everything going? We are doing phenomenal. Great to have Mike Logic in the house. Let's make that for you guys, man. There we go, there we go. Let's update that little layout there just to make there you it go. interesting. That's right. Look, All right, right, boys. Uh, it is, you know, we're just going to jump right into it. I'm glad everybody's doing fine. I'm so happy to get everybody on the pod right now. But we're going to talk with the Chicago Bulls and the the mess that is the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls drafted uh, Matthias Buzelis. Is that how you say his name, uh, Mike Logic? Matthias Buzelis. Sure. We'll go with that. Yeah, that's that's close enough. That's close enough. I'll wait till Stacy and I mean uh, Adam Amin say it correctly for me to uh, uh, follow along. But uh, uh, Buzelas is uh, what 6'10", 195 forward, super super skinny. Um, you know he's been in the G League, and uh, you know he's he's going to be part of the youth movement. So Mike Logic, who is a basketball aficionado, is going to break this down for us. So Matis Buzelas, like you said, six ten. I think he's very athletic. Uh, people make a big deal about his uh, his defense. Like, is he going to be a good defender? I think right now he's going to be a very good off-ball defender. Like, he'll be able to block shots and rim protect a little bit. Uh, he's got to keep working on his lateral quickness to be – I don't know if he'll ever be a shutdown defender, but I think he could be – he, he could be a useful defender where you're not worried about him being abused on the defensive end at all times. Uh, he's got to work on his shot. Now he, his senior year of high school, he shot around 40% from the three. He shot terrible in the G league from the three. Had he shot better in the G league. If he had a better percentage, he probably wouldn't have got drafted 11. I think that's what a reason he slipped in the draft. I also think, you know, just by the way the draft went, 
team needs is the reason he slipped. Some some teams needed a big man because Buzelas was expected to go top five on a lot of draft boards. Yep. Um, but I'm very excited about this pick. I see a lot of potential. There's a lot of room for growth too. So mm-hmm. he's he's not anywhere near a finished product. And when you watch his highlight tapes, there's a lot of stuff that jumps off that jumps off the screen that you can get behind and be excited about Chicago. So uh, give this kid a chance. Uh, once again, not a finished product. Lots of room for growth. Uh, the the Bulls coaching staff is going to have to do their job and uh, coach the kid up. But I think I think he's going to fit in just fine with this youth movement that the Bulls seem to have going on. And I hope the Bulls stay the course as far as keep on bringing in young guys and getting r- rid of that elder statesman. Statesmen's. Statesmen's. Iraq. Hey, he's also a kid from Chicago, born in Chicago, raised up in Hinsdale. He's uh, what, Lithuanian. And guess who else is Lithuanian? Guess uh, who it is? Art it's, Carney over there. Our, our tourist, Carney Chauvis, is uh, Lithuanian. So, yeah. I mean, we got all, we got all of the uh, the uh, nepotism or whatever you want to call when you're when it's your countrymen and your your local uh, high school kid coming over to the so, to the Bulls. The Bulls love that type of thing. They got IO, they got Derrick Rose, you know what I mean? Like, so I think as far as like just having that local kid on the team, that's something that you can get behind. I, you know, I, I've never heard of 99% of these guys that are in the, the, in this draft. I, I don't think most of us did, especially all these uh, international players that like the French players, it, it, it kind of tells you that, you know, with Tony Park and all that stuff, the way he built up basketball in France after the Spurs won their championships in the late 90s and early 2000s, you see that big push from the international. But the problem is, is that we don't, unless you're watching on YouTube or or somehow have like an international basketball pra- uh, uh, package on your TV, you don't know who these guys are. So it's a very interesting move to see even up to that 11th pick who these guys are. Now, if you're watching the G League, that's a one thing. But most of these players, we have no idea who they are. I have no idea. When you talk about he's supposed to be a top five guy, uh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, there was not – you look at – there was so much more hype around the WNBA and the women's tournament this year that I think a lot of people didn't pay that much attention to who was coming up in this draft. Mike, you want to rebuttal that? Yeah, this this is the pick that I wanted the Bulls to make. I know you guys followed me on Facebook and I made a post because I, I watched an IG video of one of his recent workouts where he, he looked like he put a little bit of muscle on. He, he's obviously very skinny and that's his physique is something he has to work on. But um, he, like I said, he was a very highly, highly uh, talked about prospect going into this draft. And I didn't even get, I didn't even, over the fact that he can he can get a shot off the dribble, he can create for himself a little bit. He can really attack the rim, and you know once you get him in the fast break, he giddy io like this is. And we're gonna talk about Demar and how things with Demar slows down the offense. But this is the kind of young offense that I would like to see from the Bulls, and I think he fits in perfectly. You got something, Stevie B. Yeah, I mean, I don't know much about this guy. Um, I'm pretty much listening to you guys talk at this point, you know, but I I mean, I'm always excited for a new guy to come on in and see what he's got. Uh, I'm more interested in talking about uh, whenever we get a chance, Patrick Williams, five years, 90 million. I think we go, we'll we'll get get there, but yeah, we'll get to that. I'm excited. I, I do like that we're picking someone from Chicago who likes the team born and raised. So I think that's exciting. It is you. So he's got good ball handling ability for a six ten player. He's comfortable facing the basket, operating on the perimeter, especially in transition. Um, so I've seen a couple of his uh, of his G League stuff, and he he's not afraid to put his back against the basketball as well. He's got a good fadeaway. You know, he can yeah. shoot from ten to twelve feet. He can dribble the ball for the most part for a big boy. Um, he's a, a decent passer. The problem is, was his shooting from the perimeter because that's the new NBA. The new NBA's run and gun, shoot from the perimeter. Um, it's it's a fast paced game, and what we're trying to get away from is the Demar, you know, bogging down the, the the offense with the, you know, let me take eight dribbles and you know, fade away and under. And while it's effective, and he's got a great mid range game, 
Um, that is no longer the NBA that is now, and so is Zach. Zach's another one that dribbles for 23 seconds and then hurls up a, a Hail Mary. So that's the problem with the Bulls, and I think that with the youth movement that they're doing now, they're trying to make it more kind of like OC, OKC, where we're running and gunning, and we're going to move, we're going to outrun the guys on the opposite opposition uh, to to, win, to get a win. So um, I think it's going to be exciting. I think there's a lot of up, up potential, but I don't know, will he start? Uh, with the Bulls when the season breaks? I don't think he's going to start right away, and, that, and that's fine. That, that was the question that you're posing, right? Is he, is yeah. he ready to start? I don't think there's a need to start him right now. Um, I would start right now. Let's say no no DeMar. We'll say Boots is still on the team. Just mm-hmm. hypothetically, I'd go Kobe, Io, uh, Giddy, obviously, Patrick Williams. And Vooch, you can bring this kid along. He's going to get plenty of minutes. Where are you playing Zach then? Because Zach is not getting traded. <laughs> so what are you doing with Zach? Is he sitting next to Billy? You're right. Zach's probably not going anywhere. In a perfect world, Zach's already gone. But um, as you stated, he's probably not going anywhere. So then I was the man coming off the bench. But once again, like, you don't have to rush Modis. You can give him plenty. He can get plenty of minutes, 25, 26 minutes per game. He he doesn't have to he doesn't have to come in and make an immediate impact right away. So the pressure's off him. He just has to work hard, keep getting better. You were talking about his ball handling. It's good. It can be a lot better. And Correct. it's gonna get tighter. Uh, I think he'll end up working with Kobe White. You saw how Kobe's handles have improved because he works with uh, the the trainer, uh dribble too much or something, something like that. His train shout out to his trainer, whoever it is, is really good. So um once again, he doesn't have to come in and play 35 minutes per game. You can you can bring him along slowly. As long as he's getting the minutes to develop, I'll be satisfied with that. And I think the coaching staff will as well. So we might be seeing him and Jalen Terry go up and down from the G League to to fill out the Bulls roster? Do we have time to talk about Jalen Terry? <laughs> How long is this podcast now? Uh, yeah, I mean... I don't think I, I honestly don't think he's one of those players that's going to get time in the G League. I don't. Okay. He's first round. He's a lottery pick. Dalen Terry was not a lottery pick. Right. Uh, he's going to be a rotational everyday player. Dalen Terry was not. So I think big difference there. All right. Let's let's uh, pivot over to the Bulls uh, signing a player, Jalen Smith. He agreed with a three-year, twenty-seven million dollar deal with the Bulls, uh, according to uh, Woj. Uh, Smith played with the Pacers uh, last two seasons. Uh, you know, was part of the playoffs. Uh, he also played for the Phoenix Suns. He's averaged nine points, five rebounds in 17 minutes, shooting f- about 60% from the field and 42 from three-point range. Uh, it, and this is somebody that we talked off air uh, a couple of days ago. Where, you know, Mike's uh, literally gave me a list of players, and this was one of them. And I was like, who the hell is Jalen Smith? Because I'm pretty sure E-Rock was the same thing. Like, who the hell is Jalen Smith? He had a good game against the Bulls last season. Uh, he did. <laughs> that's <laughs> very fair. No, that's true. Uh, Jalen Smith, 6'10". I think he's 24 years old, drafted by Phoenix, traded to Indiana. When he got minutes, he played very well. You said he averaged around almost 10 points per game coming off the bench. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What jumps off the screen when you're watching his highlight videos is his rim protection, right? Yeah. I had no- I had no idea even watching him the couple times that I have that he was such a good three-point shooter, like efficient three-point shooter. He shot uh, 61 for 144 last season, so way better than I anticipated. And uh, he, he, once again, another player who can fast break and finish on a fast break. I I don't know too much about his, his, his back-to-the-basket game. I think that's no. probably – Something he wants to improve on. But yeah, he's he's there to replace or replace the Andre Drummond void. Yeah, the rim protection, um, the rebounding, right? Forcer inside. Yeah, yeah. Jalen Smith. So and the money they got him at, I'm very happy with that contract. Uh, and I think this is another one. And I know AK and Mark Eversley don't deserve the doubt to try to rebuild this program after they couldn't pivot from the Lonzo injury for years. But I really like the moves they've made this offseason. And this is just another one to add to their collection of moves in a positive direction. 
Yeah, it's definitely a different move uh, from what we've been so accustomed to with, you know, getting players that slow down the basketball and then lack of three point shooting, which is wasn't addressed last year. But, um, you know, speaking of three point shooting and lack thereof, uh, Patrick Williams, <laughs> Mr. I can't stay on the court, Mr. Uh, Eloy Jimenez on a Bulls jersey. Uh, literally cannot stay on the field five years, 90 million. If you can't do the math, that's about $18 million a year. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't understand how this man is making more than Kobe. I don't, I don't have an answer for you other than still him only being 20, 22. He'll be 23 this season. The potential right. seeing him also, that was the first pick that this, uh, this regime has made. Uh, first first round pick that they had, and it, it could have had Tyrese Halliburton. We're not going to go back down. We're not going to go back down memory lane as far as that draft goes. But you've seen the good things that Patrick Williams can do when he's consistent and when he's able to stay on the court, and that makes you that makes you excited as a Bulls fan if you can find a way to harness that energy and get it out of him every every game. But the rebounding, like to be 6'10", and average right on right around five rebounds per game, mm-hmm. it, it's got to improve. I, I yeah. ninety million for him for five years. They they're still. I think they envision him getting better and better, uh, and it, it's still an investment for them. They're not ready, and me personally, I'm not ready to let him walk out the door either. He's too young to let go. Yeah, it, it's kind of like what we did with Larry and, and um, uh, Chandler, where they, you know, let they let them go too early before developing them. Um, so it's it's really a catch twenty two because you got they got to, they're going to fall on their sword if this guy doesn't pan out. It might be their job. Here's the other thing about the money, Z, is the way that contracts are going and the CBA is going in a couple seasons. That might be the veteran minimum. I think the veteran minimum right now, like. The max veteran minimum is around 13 million. So 18 million in the grand scheme of things is really yeah. not that much. Yeah, the NBA, uh, what is it? The collective bargaining agreement raised the amount of money a team can spend by a lot. So this is due to TV contracts. You know, that's, that's where the money comes from. So if, if the ceiling is raised up, then, you know, you're able to spend more. And some of these players who don't really deserve it are getting, you know, 15 and 20 and 30 million dollars a year. I just got three years, eighty-seven million from OKC. Who did? Isaiah Harkenstein, the the oh, yeah, the from New York, yeah. So I mean, yeah, the money is ridiculous. Hopefully, Patrick Patrick earns it by staying on the court and really contributing. Like, like the numbers, and I think we talked about this off the air. The numbers I'm thinking for Pat that would be sufficient in my eyes is around 14, 16 points per game, seven to eight rebounds per game. Because the other thing about Pat, he guards the best wing most most nights, mm-hmm. like small forward, power forward. Pat's Pat's guarding that person. So my, my issue with him is he gets lost in the offense at points. You know, you know, we start off with going through Vooch, and then if Vooch is not really you know doing his thing, then it's like, all right, here, Zach, here you go, here's the ball, and Kobe's like you know playing third fiddle until like Zach doesn't get the ball and he's pouting in the corner when Kobe's doing his thing. And I feel like he gets lost in that in that uh, uh, in that mix until like you get the second and third unit in when they're just playing free, and that's when you see him do well when it's a free flowing offense rather than that structured half court offense. Well, well, Iraq, when they're making that type of commitment to Pat, they're basically telling him, "Hey, we need you to be the man." So your shot production has to go up a incredible amount. And you can't lay back in the weeds. You have to be engaged offensively for 48 minutes, however long you're out there for. But see, that that's the problem is that I have been seeing, I've been saying the same thing about Pat Williams for four years now when they drafted him number four overall in 2020. The next 10 to 15 years of the Chicago Bulls depends on what happens on the high pick that they have here because for years, for what, three, four years in a row, they had number seven, number seven, number seven pick, right? When you get to the number seven pick, it's almost a crapshoot. I mean, you can, you know, we've seen later round or later picks in the first round come out and shine. Jimmy Butler, for example, you know, um, what's his name? 
the Greek freak. There's a lot of players that, but it's random, right? Because the NBA, I feel like the first five picks are the ones that really make a difference. And it's about who you develop, right? And you get, a, you got a guy like Halliburton and stuff like that, but it's really about who you develop. You talk about four years in a system under this regime. And you have not seen you, the one thing he can do decently is shoot threes, but he's so damn big. It's like, he's scared of the rim. It's it's the weirdest thing to see a big dude like that. It's almost like it reminds me a little bit of uh, Tyrus Thomas, right? Tyrus Thomas seemed like he could not understand how to control his own athleticism. He could jump out the gym, but he didn't understand. He had no finesse to his game, right? He had like hands of bricks and he just he flamed out because he really just didn't do anything. Pat will it. it I understand why why they gave him the money. He's only 22 years old. He is a young man, and they've already had him for for what three four years already at this point. So I mean, I think the fair uh, the, the fear, like Z said, is that you know you're gonna let him go. He's gonna develop like like our boy Larry yeah. Markman, right? Or, or how you've seen a lot of other players. I mean, look look at uh, um uh, old boy that's in uh, Eric, um, Eric Jones Jr. playing for the Mavs. I don't care about Derek Jones. I know Mike Logic Doug loves Mark, him so much. Uh, Mark about him. Doug uh, McDermott. <laughs> McDermott? No, McDermott? Doug either. I'm talking about Dougie was in like the, on the Pacers. I'm talking about old boy that's in uh, um, who uh, Milwaukee team? right now. The big oh, Bobby big, Portis. Thank you, thank you. Oh, scary. Yeah, hell yeah. Like, yeah. Whoa. That's all you had to do was make the frog eyes. right. I know, but I was trying to get the name. I'm trying to be a little professional. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the thing is that they would let go of these guys too early. You see them develop. And I think, I, honestly, I think Bobby Porter's leaving the Bulls put more of that dog in him. I wish he left some here for Pat Will because Pat Will does not have that in him at all. That's what we've been talking about is that the fact that you want him to be aggressive. You want him to have that dog. And I mean, like, it, it's just, I, I'm, I'm really hopeful that that might be the case. I'm hoping some Alex Caruso rubbed off on him. I'm hoping some DeMar DeRozan rubbed off on him. I'm hoping some Andre Drummond rubbed off on him because you need this young man to develop if you have any chance or any thought. Now, here's the thing. You look at where they are when they're talking about the youth movement, right? Who are they going to have to compete against in five years, right? NBA players seem to last uh, you know, longer and longer these days, especially when you talk about LeBron playing with his son. But when you look at um, the youth movement five years from now, where are those Celtics going to be towards the end of that, you know, that, that run and where you're going to be on the rise. Is that the goal that you, that you're looking at right here? Cause you ain't doing nothing this year. You're yeah. not. Yeah. I so agree. that I agree. has to be the idea right now. I agree. That's what they're looking for for the next four years. What can we do to compete at that point? We're going to develop for the next four years. Cause Boston is going to be a powerhouse, right? You still got Philadelphia, New York's got a good team. You you got some uh, Indiana's a good team. You got a bunch of players in in your conference that are pretty good. So you're like, okay, you and Detroit are pretty much neck and neck, saying we're going with the youth movement and we're going to develop our players, and then maybe add a couple free agents to round us off and push us over the edge. Uh, welcome to the show, Lex. Great to uh, hear from you. I haven't heard from you in a while. <laughs> oh. Quick, I was pointing down. <laughs> but with uh, with Pat, I think a lot of it has to do with confidence, and I'm pretty sure we've talked about it before. But he he was in a weird situation when he got drafted the Bulls. How many top five picks start their career playing with three All Star level players? A, a lot of a lot of those guys go to garbage teams. They get a lot of minutes, and they learn how to sort of become the man. So we don't know if he has that level to him. Like, I don't want to say he doesn't have that dog in him. Right now, it doesn't seem like he does. No. I think he lacks a little bit of a motor at times, especially with the rebounding. Like, that pisses me off more than anything. You're I agree. That. No reason a, a, you have a guard having more rebounds than this dude. I, yeah. I, just, I just feel like when I see him play, the he doesn't get the rebounds, and the person who's getting the rebound is always in front of him, and he's a big guy. He doesn't box out. He doesn't put his body on him, and this is where he misses the rebounds. He's athletic too. He's he's a f athletic freak. Right, and I do not want to see him shoot threes. I don't. But he's so, a forty percent shooter, and that's the part where it's uh, like big, big men got to be able to shoot these days. That that's just a fact. They big no. men have to be able to shoot these days. I want to see him use his pull up a lot more. I think he has a very good pull up. Yeah, he's, I'll he's take him shooting twos on the inside. But it's like it's like when Vooch shoots threes. It's like. When he no, makes them, no, he no, makes no, them, no, but no. then he doesn't, and he keeps shooting because, them. Because Pat Will can make that. Pat, that was, what, what, 
strengths of his game when he came here from Orlando. Now he, he's most certainly one of the most skilled big men when it comes to having their back to the basket. His footwork's very, very good. And that's where his strength really, really is. But I understand why Vooch shoots threes because he knows he can do it. He just he's had a couple down seasons and it has not looked good for Vooch. For a team that does not shoot the three well, having Pat Williams be able to shoot the three needs to happen because when you need to have someone other than Zach, than um, Kobe White to be that offensive threat. If you can have Pat healthy, being able to shoot from the outside, all of a sudden, next thing you know, you got you got Kobe White sneaking around. That's a, that's an easy easy uh, uh, layup under the basket, and vice and, versa, and vice no. versa. And I agree with you, and I would love to see that more often, but I feel like anytime I see them shoot the three, everyone is on the perimeter. No one's on the inside to get yeah. the rebound. Yeah. And that's the part where it's like that you got to have people in there, Vooch or Patrick, someone in them to at least get the rebound because I just see the plays passing around the three and then someone shoots and no one's in the center and they lose it. And yeah. I would also like to see Pat play a lot more small forward than power forward. I think he'd yeah. be – a more effective small forward than he he would be a power forward. He does I think small. by his lack of rebounding, it's just he doesn't have a nose for the basketball. Yeah, well, they got uh, they got Jalen Smith now too. You know what I mean? So I mean, and and he's he's really improved. You look at his stats from twenty two to twenty three. His field goal percentage went up twelve points. His three point percentage went up fourteen points. He had he was forty two uh, percent from three last year. So. I mean, it, it, and his field goals, his field goals went up to sixty percent, basically. So he was only scoring ten points a game, but that's like bonus points right there. If you if you can get a guy like this who can be a dog around the rim, and that's where your boards are going to come from, then it's okay. I mean, that's what it is. You need him to to you need him to play those minutes again. Andre Drummond, right? Who's back in Philly? Everyone's like, oh, they should have kept him too. But like he's been gone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's, Caruso was like, I'm out. Yeah, but that's like that piecemeal of the guys that are like 28, 30, 31 years old, right? That's what you're doing when you have AC, right? I love AC, but don't yeah. get me wrong. Let him go to a contender where he can win something. He can actually, he's he could be on a team on the rise versus a team that's trying to be on the rise. Because that, regardless of what you want to say about the youth movement that the Bulls are part of, they are trying to be on the rise. They're not there yet. We have to see what's going to happen. Even if you show, you, you're going to lose a lot of games this, this next season. I feel that. But if you can actually, at, at the very least, show that you're on the rise, show that you have that potential to be on the rise, it could be very interesting with, with the youth movement that they got going on right now. They have to they have to find a middle ground between tanking and being competitive. You, what do you mean? They do that every year. They're, they're 500 every year. That's what they do. They that's, stay in the middle. That's the no, Bears. They, they have to be top 10 bad, Z. That, well, no. that's what I'm saying. You can't be top 10 bad, just like JC said, with Zach and Vooch. You've got to get rid of those two players so that way you can be top 10 bad and keep your pick and you don't lose that, that the, the Rosen pick. Talking about Zach. Talking about Zach. Well, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Okay. All right, let's see what Lex says. Lex said Giddy's uh, shot was wet in the corner. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I, you, you watch more stuff than I do, Lex, so I, I'm going to agree with you there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, he was forty from the three point hey, percent. The development department has their hands full, but a lot of potential to work with. G Giddy, he he can sh he can shoot it. Like his form's not terrible. It's just it's not consistent enough. He's yeah. another one of those players. Uh, Io's three point shooting improved a lot. Yep, Giddy's twenty one. I don't see why his wouldn't improve. It seems like it's improved every season. Yeah. All right, so uh, I wanted to get Michael Logic on the on the show just because I wanted to know what his reaction was to the Caruso trade, and then explain who we're getting in Josh Giddy. I had I had no problem with it. I didn't see it coming. I I would have been happier if they traded Caruso during the season. Well, everybody was <laughs> because I thought it was crazy that and. You've seen my Facebook post. I'm like, oh, we're, we're, and this is why the trade was just happening. I'm like, oh, we're getting back picks. We're getting back. No, it's a straight up trade, AC for uh, Josh Giddy. I, I like Giddy as a player a lot. I think there's there's a whole lot of things that he does well that's going to translate to what this team will do for success in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a he's a brilliant playmaker. He's a good ball handler. He can, he attacks the rim pretty well too. Uh, 
that that's where his bread and butter is playmaking, attacking the rim. His court vision is up there with Lonzo Balls, as far as I, in my opinion. Uh, he does really well on the fast break or in a half court offense. The three point shooting's got to improve, though. Uh, it, every guard in this league needs to be able to shoot the ball at an efficient rate and a high, high efficient rate. Mm -hmm. So that's why him and him, Pat will Kobe, IO, they all need to be in the gym shooting with one another. Uh, as soon as this, as soon as the Olympics is over, because obviously Giddy's playing for Australia, but he, he adds more length uh, and size to the lineup, big guard, six, eight. And once again, just, a lot of room for growth. So this is a youth movement that the Bulls have finally decided to go with. And now they just need to, to stick with it and don't deviate from the plan. Cause I like the plan. Just use the OKC Thunder uh, blueprint. You don't have the picks that they have, but you have the youth on your side. So keep going with that is my opinion. See, I, I seen that comment that JC just put in there is co holding oh, Kobe White. Is he worth it, right? Well, here's the thing. He's 24. Io's 24. Josh Giddy's 24. Um, the kid, the, the other kid they just brought in from the Pacers is 24. Uh, 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 Pat Patrick Will's 24. Yeah. But he's a baby. I mean, it, how, they're all the same age. If they're going to mature, they're going to mature together. And typically, I mean, like, unless you're a freak, unless you're an absolute freak, in, in basketball, in the NBA, as a developmental uh, player, right? Which most of these guys are. They still need to develop. The, the, here's here's what I here's what I tell my daughter about her softball team, right? Your talent and your athleticism is what brought you here, but your hard work is what's going to keep you here, right? And that's what it really comes down to. If these guys work hard, and he's talking about IO shot, Pat Will shot, getting better, you know, through through the development of the team, everybody needs to be in that gym all day, all day, shoot a thousand threes a day. Whatever you can, because that's what the league comes down to. I, I was chilling with with Mike in that that slick ass little room, and he's sitting right there with the bar behind him. Everyone can't see it, but I know where it's there. So I, I was chilling with him, watching the NBA Finals. Right, where I remember we were talking about Kyrie. What did I say about Kyrie? He should be on a Magic for his disappearing act. That bullshit ass play. He 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 just completely disappeared. And and my my point of all of this is that as you develop, as you grow. You have to put in the work. And is Patrick Williams willing to put in that work? The problem is, is that every time you see, oh, I mean, I'm excited from this year. I'm excited. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. Injured. Oh, I got a broken finger. Oh, my ankle hurts. Oh, one of my braids fell out. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but he seems to be hurt all the time. And and I think the biggest detriment that, that we can all agree about with this regime is that they took three, three years, three years to trade a human for another human. Yeah. How you know how why did it take you so long? You sat there and watched Lonzo with his one hop along, hop along leg on that treadmill. Oh, I'm coming back. You ain't coming, you ain't doing shit, right? They never, they never ever replaced him, right? When when Derrick Rose went down, you saw the carousel of point guards come in and 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 take over, and you had them for a one-year deal, Nate Robinson, all these other guys, right? The dude that was messing around with Mayweather's wife. All that mess, but they found a way to actually fill in that spot. The Bulls never, ever, 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 ever did that when Lonzo Ball went down. And I and I remember telling Mike at the time when they brought in uh, Lonzo, I was like, I don't know if I like this. Mike was all about it. He was impressive in the, what, like, four games that he played for the Bulls, and then that was it. It's a, it's a waste of money. And th that's the biggest thing I have against this regime is that they never found a way to even a bandaid over a bullet wound. They never even found a way. It was just, oh, he'll be back. He'll be back. He ain't back. He ain't you back. A little bit more respect though, because they were in first place. What? For what? For being broken? He's broken. That's not his fault. Injuries are a part of the game. Whose fault? Not for like eight years. His fault that they He's just stealing play. money. They just kind of were just waiting to see if he would come back after a couple of seasons. He's not coming back, guys. <laughs> okay, but how do you not how do you not find a way to fix that? How do you not have a way to fix that in all these years? It's garbage. Israel has that blind love for the Bulls, like see Red Fred. He, yeah, he, he, he's really like the Bulls are gonna be great as a prize. 
you're the one that's going to be surprised because what's going to happen is at some point they'll be able to trade Vooch this season while he's still here. He's going to start with the Bulls, but he won't end up with the Bulls this season, tell you that. I don't and know then, if the Bulls, honestly. I don't what's they up? find a trade partner for him. I hope they do because uh, cool. apparently uh, the Bulls tried to trade Zach to Golden State for Chris Paul and some other assets. And, and Chris Paul uh, in the Golden State said, uh, no, thank you, and then released Chris Paul. Like the big, <laughs> the, literally the big F you. They rather release him than than trade him for <laughs> for Zach. A first that's, round pick. Yeah, yeah, that's a little embarrassing. And I do not want to give up a first round pick in a Zach Levine trade. Like I don't want to lose another pick, especially with the drafts coming up. I, I would, I would highly, highly not suggest that. So what's the plan then this season? Since there is no trade partner, there is no trade value for Zach. How does how does Billy Donovan get Zach to play into Billy Donovan's offense and not play that solo ball that that you know he wants to play all day? What's what's funny is you know we all want Zach gone, <laughs> and we've been, we've been wanting him gone. He kind of he kind of ruined that trade last year to Detroit because he decided he, uh, he was going to have season and en- ending surgery. He pulled the pin in with this offense really well because they will play fast pace and that won't allow him to, to do as much of of the uh the the solo iso iso ball uh, it will allow him to be a, a catch and shoot assassin it will allow him to get out on the fast break because he's still fast it, it was it was the mar that slows this team down because of the, the style of play demar likes to play zach fits in with this group that they have right now Unfortunately, everybody in this group chat, th- this podcast right now wants to see him gone, and I think most Chicago Bulls fans do as well. Like we've had enough. The the experiment did not work. I just feel that we had enough because he's hurt. He's a detriment to the team when he's not involved. When Demar's getting the last shot and he's not, he's sitting in the corner pouting. I mean, that's not the type of team team player that we want. You know, and even when he's been given the ball and said, hey, DeMar said, hey, here's I did it last year. This is your team now. He didn't rise to the occasion. He was not the leader. You wanted to be the leader. You got your commercials. You got your shoe. You got out the notoriety and you were not the leader. DeMar said, here you go. I'm the older statement. Here you go. I'm passing the ball to you. And he didn't take the ball and run and run with it. And that's what the Bulls fans see. That's why we we got attached to Caruso because that kid's playing 150 miles an hour and is made out of glass. Like that's the type of players that, that Chicago loves. We understand the kid's gonna get hurt, but his defense, he, he's a great uh, role model, he's a good uh coach on on uh, when on the bench when he's hurt. You want good players that complement each other, and Zach really doesn't compliment because he's got that ego of me first. I understand what you're saying is that when they're playing running gun, he can slash to the basket and he can dunk or he can, you know, be a shooter. Yes, that does that does happen. That's great for him. Yeah. But if he's not getting the ball past him and it's going to be passed to Kobe or Io or Pat Will and he's not getting his 22, 25 points a game, is he going to be a detriment to the team? Zach Levine would be the best big, uh, uh, best basketball player in the big three of all time because he only has two other players on the court with him. You understand what I'm saying? That's the problem is that he he's not a team player. He He's an and one player to me, right? And what I mean by that, I'm talking about and one basketball back in the day, mixtapes, all that shit, because he has all the athleticism in the world, but his basketball IQ is trash. He could jump out the gym, jump out the UC, dunk on the moon, but he doesn't know what to do with the ball if he's not shooting it or if he's not dunking or layup. You know what I mean? Like he, he just he knows how to score. Sometimes, but that's it. And that's all he wants to do. He has no interest in being anyone's teammate. Yeah. One day he's the one night he's shooting six, 60. The next he's shooting 15. Like that's exactly it. And that's the point that you're making. Like you're, which Zach you're going to get the Zach that shoots 15 and pouts or the 60. He's going to score one night. I, I mean, I like to think that he's going to do well and uh, mesh well and bond with the team. I, I hope he does, but I don't, I don't know yet. When has he ever done that though? He has never done that in his career. Right, because he's always he's been the always star been number here. Number one, number one, number one. So you pair, hey, you got a one and a one A with him and and uh, and Demar, and he just shrunk. He shrunk, and and the only time you ever saw you you're not wrong. It, it was either fifteen or fifty every night, 
right? That's that was his. If he wasn't the main focus, if if they played any defense on him, he was like, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> I'm good. Z, can we address Lex's comment about uh, Zach respecting Lonzo, but he doubts he respects Giddy as a point guard? There it is. Why, Lex? <laughs> <laughs> Why would he? You've seen the playmaking ability. We've talked about the playmaking ability. We've seen what he's done to Chicago. He, he had some great games against the Bulls. I know everybody does, but right. the playmaking mm-hmm. is there. Like, if I'm Zach, I'd be super pumped to play with another uh, pass-first type point guard like Josh Giddy is. Because he I'm loved like, Lonzo. That's what he said. It's the light skin all stars. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's it, right? I mean, tell me. <laughs> oh my God. Tell, tell me something different, right? It's a red, it's a red bone all stars right there. That's what it is. I'm part of the club. Shh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the founding member, but I'm part of the club. Yeah, I mean, look, hey man. Hey, look, um, look, the uh the mixed race all stars. What's up? <laughs> yeah, that's fast. What's this stuff Curry here? Oh my God! Hey, uh, hey, wait, wait, wait. Real, real no. quick, we got Mike uh, Logic, right? The NBA savant. I need to know what you think about uh, Clay leaving uh, the Warriors. Oh my God! Uh, with the way that negotiations have gone, with the way his his playing time has gone down uh, significantly, coming off the bench, I. I who who could have not seen this coming? Like everyone was like, oh, he should have just went back to the Warriors. Like, no, he was disrespected, and it's not so much that he was disrespected. It's just as as you age, especially in basketball, you're only going to be good for so long and so that so valuable to a to an organization. Not everybody finishes their career with the same organization they started with. No, and I play has gone to a spot in Dallas. With Luca and Kyrie, guys who can get them, guys, guys who can get him good shots because they command so much of the attention from the defense. Clay's gonna be open. Clay's gonna get his baskets. He's gonna be able to start because they lost their Jones Jr. to the Clippers in free agency. I know he had to take less. He took three years, fifty mil. Probably he probably wanted more, but I he think did. This- he did get offered more from the Lakers, and he turned yeah. it down. Mm-hmm. I think Dallas has a better chance of winning a title or at least getting back to the championship than the Lakers do. Now, the Lakers might make some more moves, uh, but I already bet somebody today that Dallas would finish with a better record than the Lakers. So I'm going to add on that. <laughs> you made me do the Shaq eyes right there. Oh, man. I never thought I would hurt, hear anything, any type of Lakers slander like that in my life. Oh, man. Especially you got you got two you got two LeBron Jameses on the same team. Oh, my goodness. How the hell am I hearing this Lakers slander from a one Mike L-O-G-I-K? Oh, my goodness. July 1st, 2004, ladies and gentlemen. It happened today. I'm just being real. Uh, <laughs> I get it. Like you have Honestly, to win, win. here's here's my here's my question though. What is Clay gonna do when when Kyrie is just somewhere in the locker room because he disappears and Luca is still sitting on the ground crying about a foul that happened three plays ago? What's what's he gonna do then? He's gonna turn you back, and I both saw that. Turn back the clock and he's gonna go off for like thirty seven and, and a half or in a quarter. He can do that, but he's not gonna do that. Enough. Like you saw his stats for the last couple of years. He's gonna do like yeah. I shot 70 points and all from three, or the next game I, I had four points. Probably I, I, gonna average somewhere between 17 and 19 points, maybe like right under 20 points per game. Uh, but he's he going doesn't to, need to do that. I think he have a much improved season. I think he had a rough season uh, this this last season that he played in, which is why he came off the bench. Uh, and they wanted him to come off the bench in Golden State to back up uh, Podemski. Do you guys know who that is? No. Do you? I saw him play. You're the only one. Okay, but I think he's in a good spot. I think Kyrie and Luca are going to try to find him at home. I see a lot of upsides for for, for the Mavericks, and they also signed uh, Najee Marshall, who I like from uh, the Pelicans. So I think the Mavericks made some pretty good moves to try to get back to the the finals. I don't I don't think they do, but uh, I, I like what they did in the offseason so far. Before your internet cuts out, tell, uh, <laughs> I'm, 
I still got I still got two more things for you before I'm, I, we can let you get out of this, right? Uh, number number one, we got to talk about the finals. I know that you you hate the Celtics. You did not want them to win. I think that they they paired, paid their dues. I told you what in game three. I'm like Dallas is cooked, cooked. I told I text you, and you didn't respond until an hour. That was at halftime. You didn't respond until an hour after the game was completed. Okay, so I need I need your your uh, expert thoughts on this That's NBA Finals from a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> it's not that I I hate Boston. Um, I, I actually like a lot of the players, and I actually predicted if you listen to all that podcast that Boston would win a title in, in the in the coming years. I think it was like two years ago I predict, predicted this. My problem is Jason Tatum doing his disappearing act and coming up small. When when they need him in big moments, light skin all star. What is that? Light skin all star. <laughs> uh, but uh, and he being cheesy and corny with the with the trophy, like he did, it carried the whole team. Like that annoyed I'm, I'm, I'm me. Perfect, I'm perfectly fine with that, and the reason why is because Kobe was his idol. Kobe was his idol, and I think that and and Kobe was mentoring him when Kobe passed away. That yeah. was Kobe's dude. Like I don't care what what anyone says, that was Kobe's dude. He had his people. He looked out for Luca, and he definitely looked out for Jason Tatum because he knew how much he looked up to Jordan so much, and he understood what that relationship was like to have not just someone to look up to, but someone who eventually came became a mentor to him. I I really actually appreciated the way that Jason Tatum like took that and understood that. You might never, ever, ever, ever get a chance to hold this trophy again as a champion. Relish every every single second of it. I was perfectly cool with that. Everything fell in place for the Celtics. Getting Drew Holiday from the yep. from the from the Bucks, yeah. After mm-hmm. he got traded there from Milwaukee, which I still don't understand. I get that Dame is an offensive uh, weapon, incredible offensive player, but Drew does so much. He, he impacts the game uh, in many different ways. And then getting uh, Chris Stapps Porzingis. And then Derek White continuing to uh, to get better, even at 29 years old. And that's why he got paid a big I'm bag today. Yep. Good luck beating them next season, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. That's that. Yeah. That, that's going to be as long as they keep their. I mean, because look, they just extended everybody. Everyone got four and five yeah. deals. Every the whole starting lineup. You know, you just got as long as you stay healthy. I mean, you you'll be you'll be good. You'll be golden. Boston's a problem, even with the moves that Philly made. Even with signing Paul George, getting Andre Drummond and Eric Gordon on uh, vet that's, minimum that's contracts. A, basically, you got you got to you got to hope that Embiid stays healthy throughout the playoffs. You got to hope Paul George. Trust the process, bro. Just trust the process. Okay, for how many years already? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm like, how many years are going to hear something? But look, uh, I I I believe it was the Knicks that I said was that they're um shit, uh, they're they're uh, one Drew Holiday away from from you know that next step, right? That's what it is. Is that Drew Holiday was so to me? He's he's so underrated, right? Like he was the the Robin that came in that helped the Bulls push through those last three championships. He was so like needed for that team to to to. Uh, be you know get to the top of that mountain and the funny thing is is that they they kind of just he kind of just fell in their lap after after <laughs> after dame decided he was done with portland drew holiday kind of fell in the in the celtics lap the way and, and it just worked out like beautifully for them all right so the last thing and we have we have to talk about this we have to talk about lebron james and his son on the same team, I, I, I before before I, I let you. Are you going to waste time or time on this? Before before I let you really dig deep because I'm going to let you drool all over yourself for a while. I will say this. I, I think it's I think it's dope that LeBron James has been in the league long enough to play with his son. Number one, I think it's dope that he was play he played in the league long enough and had the influence over the team that he plays for to be able to, to help draft his son to that team. It's fair. First, first and foremost, that's what I'll say. 
as as a as a dad whose kid plays sports, if I was in that position, you best believe I would do that. I saw people talking about like, well, Jordan never did that to his kids, and Marcus was trash. I'm like, Marcus had better stats in college than, than Bronny, number one. But number two, Jordan would never do that. Jordan's like, if you if you're not the best, then you're not the best. Get the fuck out of my way. I don't want you on my team if you ain't good. That's my that's my point on that. But I do think it's dope. I like LeBron as a person. It's just all the he, it's the Luca laying on the ground crying and oh my god the wind knocked me over that's the bullshit that I hate athleticism all that stuff and uh, and we the other thing that we just talked about with over the weekend I never saw I never saw that killer instinct out of LeBron those are the two knocks I always had against him he never well, we're not- saw the killer instinct but anyway talk let me, talk talk to me about his uh his ability and his in his um his longevity to stay in the league long enough to be able to help <laughs> help his get his son drafted to the team that he's currently playing for. Yeah, I think when you're talking about somebody playing for as long as he is and at the level which he's playing at, I don't think you've ever seen anything like this. Not even not even Tom Brady. You know, Tom Brady's 45. Uh I don't think you compare I don't as far as like LeBron is basically still jumping out of the gym. Tom Brady's arm wasn't as strong at the end of his career as it was in the beginning of his career. Like, LeBron still looks like a freight train running down the court. Yeah, This is just going to turn into a LeBron love fest. No, no, we, no we, don't, we don't have the time for that. Win, win a champion. Look, Tom Brady was still winning championships at 44 years old. Bron's That's got, what it, Bron's got four. Yeah. How, when was his last championship? 2016? Yeah, bubble. Look, we're here to talk about Bronny, right? Like, fucking bubble? That's, we that's really, really count. Really. The bubble, them, none of them bubble championships count. There's only one bubble championship. But but again, I can't, I don't know why you'd want to play with your dad. Like, you're going to be bothered all the time. You're going to be, can't do anything. You're going to be monitored. Daddy's boy. Oh, man. I I can't, I can't, I don't care, but I just couldn't do it. I I really, I think it's really, really cool. It's dope. That was my first reaction. Like, wow, this is incredible. Being a dad myself, even just playing in like a rec league with my son, it brings me great joy. Um, as far as Bronny's talents go, he was he was predicted to, to get drafted into the league for the past couple of years. Like this wasn't something like he just jumped on draft boards. No, his stock fell because he didn't perform that well in college. But he did he did have a heart issue, a heart condition. He did not get the full training camp that he was supposed to get. We didn't even know if he was going to play basketball again. So the fact he was able to come back. Played basketball for USC. Their team was trash. Isaiah Collier, he was he was a top. Uh, he was supposed to be a top ten pick. He fell out of uh, he fell out of the top ten. They were supposed to be a lot better than they were. Uh, it just wasn't a very good team. But to say that Bronny doesn't deserve to be in the NBA, I just I don't see it because I can see the potential. I really like his on ball defense. I think he's very tenacious when it comes to that. I think. You're going to see an improved shooter once he gets to the league, especially with J.J. Redick as his head coach. Because I don't think he has a bad shot as it as it is. Um, but to to say he doesn't belong in the league, I think is just ridiculous. And the only reason he got drafted is because of his father. Nobody Maybe. said that. You don't no, want to. Say I don't. That. I don't think that he. I agree that he's. You know, be in the I, league. I, I he was, he earns it. I thought I'm he was saying, saying, He's not going to get in the first or second round. He would have been a free agent pickup. Yeah, he's going to – I think he's going to have a decent career in this league. Now, here's the other thing I tell people too is, okay, even if his, LeBron being his father helped him get into the league, LeBron is going to have to earn his spot and keep his spot. Yeah. His dad's not going to have any sway over anyone when it comes to that. So well, we'll, we'll, isn't, his, isn't his brother a better player anyway? Yeah, he's, he's, he, he's set to come into the NBA in, what, two years? Two so years, yeah. Yeah, so he'll get drafted by the Lakers too, and then they'll have to cut Bronny. We'll see. I, I see a freak out. <laughs> uh, only two, only two Lebrons. Only. It's, it's it's too many Lebrons. Is yeah. No, Lebron will end up being an assistant coach on that team. That's what Facts. probably would happen. Facts. No, he'd be the GM. Right. Coach. Right. No, I'm GM. just gonna say this. I work with my dad, and at the same time. I'm just like, I can't do this all the time. I'm being micromanaged. I'm being shown. It's like, let me grow, man. 
let me grow let so me you know what let me fly yeah let me earn these uh peacock wings and let me fly you know what What's i mean the in, the, in the in the hierarchy though because lebron and Bronny are, are technically just teammates right lebron really it, that's the difference if you're if you work with your dad i'm assuming he's, he's my been, coworker. He's not, essentially he's, coworker. he's not my dad I call him Sal to everyone there. I don't but call him this, by his actual. Where he's higher than you in, in the in the company. <laughs> I mean, he's been there longer, so yeah. Is he okay. Yeah. I'm not You'll walking around and be like, yeah, you know my daddy. No, I'm not doing that. That's what Bronny's no, gonna end up yeah. doing. But you know, Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, Papa, can you see my smile? All right, guys. <laughs> uh, Mike, are, are you staying out for baseball? No. I, All right, Mike, uh, let the <laughs> listeners know where they can find you and listen to your music, man. Uh, if you guys would like to follow me on Instagram, it's M-I-C-L-O-G-I-K. You can use that same name for all the major streaming platforms to find my music. Uh, hit me up, DM me if you have any questions uh, or concerns about my music. I'd be happy to answer uh, any questions you have. And as always, thank you to E-Rock, to Big Z, to Steve. Thank you for having me on your guys' podcast. Appreciate it. All right, fellas, uh, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Mike, thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15. TRUEFAN15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, percent off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15% off of your entire order. Hey guys, it's Steven. And this is Sean, and you are listening to True Chicago Sports Fans. Don't forget to listen to Nowhere on the Weekend, new episodes on Monday. You can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Yeah, so we're going to go do a couple of shots, so let's kick it back over to Big Z. Nowhere on the Weekend. Welcome back. All right. True Chicago Sports Fans. That was cool. Big Z. Yeah, Happy Mike Logic is great. You know, he owns a lot of basketball. He uh, studies the league, studies college basketball, so that's super great to get him on and get his knowledge and if you don't know about his music go follow him on his instagram and uh listen to his great music i'm a big fan of his music i play it all the time in the jeep and uh yeah you know. not once have i heard it i'm kidding <laughs> you've been in my jeep like twice <laughs> uh it's been more than twice i think i don't know but you know it's yeah. okay it's okay. Uh, it's okay it's okay it's okay uh, so, gentlemen, let's talk our Chicago baseball teams. We got the Chicago Cubs and Chicago White Sox that are really leaving a bad smell in the city of Chicago while we're super excited about the new beginnings with the Blackhawks, the Bulls, the Bears, uh, the Chicago Sky. The two baseball teams have been stinking up the, sh- the, the city. Uh, he looks confused for a second there. Can't yeah, this game, buddy. There's, no, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, you know, you got a little brother or sister and you're, you're, I don't actually. Say, well, that's a that's a you problem, man. That's I mean, the parents the parents hated you so much they say I can't take another one. No, so more. Take another. no, more. Hey, no but look, yeah, that's exactly what happened. I'm glad <laughs> no, you talked to not. them. They're in Chiller Park. You're in a close enough town, yeah, so you I'm know. Close, but no, this is this is this is why I got a confused look on my faces because when you got a younger sibling and you want to go to the park when you're a kid and go play ball, and your parents go, "Could you take your little brother with you?" And what do you say? Do I have to? And that's how I feel about when I t- think about talking about Chicago baseball because it is a fucking disaster. It, it, it's it, the fact that we have to talk about it. I mean, I guess, but I mean, shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to talk about the positives in some point, but I am very angry inside. And every time I walk out of this house, I hate everyone. So, yeah, I, 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 I literally pay for you, sir. Oh that's yeah, cool. get out the way when I'm driving from Humboldt to Arlington Heights. Like, that's move, just move. Doesn't stop if it turns off, it ain't turning back on. No, it's not. Like the AC <laughs> that happened here oh. not too long ago. So, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, I, I really, there's really not much to report on the Cubs, and we're we're gonna fly I, through. I will say thing. this. I will say this. Uh, Ian Hap has been 
doing really well hitting the ball, right? He's been great. Nico has been great, right? He, I see some of the slug, right? He's hitting. But I have an issue with if Christopher Morrell is leading the Cubs with 45 RBIs, that's not great. Like, that is terrible. And then Pete Co Armstrong, we have only 15 stolen bases from him, and no one else, is, like, it's just him pretty much. Yeah, but I mean, no, it, he's, it's him and Morrell, the only speed, speed, right? Speed. And and uh, that's fine. And well, it's not fine, but right now, that's all we no, got is fine, right? That's, that's kind of normal, though. In, in most, you don't, it's not like you either trade speed for. For power, right? It's right. That's pretty normal. But the thing that I want to see is what I'm not seeing. If you're not hitting it out the park, right? I want to see fundamental. I want to see a little bit more steals. I want to see, you know, hitting it as far as you can to bring in that run or even transfer the guy over from first to second. Like, I just, I want to see something, but you can't do anything when the pitching does not go well and then it blows the games. And that's something that we've been talking about the whole time. Um Ethan bullshit. Roberts earned his first case since 2022. He came in like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is with career council. I don't I'm know gonna... anything about what this guy's doing. I feel like he and Jed Hoyer too. his press conference that he talked about on Sunday was just not answering the questions, mumbling and just saying, yeah, you know, we're going to figure this out. You know, it, we had a, you know, same spot that we were last season. Um, but, you know, it's, we dug ourselves in a hole and we started off great. But last season, we, we really dug ourselves in a hole and we had to fight back. Now it's like looking to see if we could fight back. And uh, there's, there's no there's no hunting this dog. I'm going to tell you right now. And the reason they're not, they're not running the bases is because they get they've been thrown out 35 times and counting. They're, they lead the league and getting thrown out. And a lot of it's been at home. Nine of them have been at home. Uh, I don't know if it's that uh, inability to run. Uh, you know, correctly, or is uh, Willie Harris over there with his uh, windmill at third base sending everybody? I don't know what it is. He's the one of them around and around and around, bro. You got to put that thing away, zip up your pants, stop swinging it, bro. That's a problem. If you want more like opportunities not to, uh, to get thrown out, just put me in. I'll definitely get out, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, you know, like I it just, it's so frustrating. And I had tickets to go on Sunday uh, to Milwaukee. And I'm like, I don't want to die by an elevator. So I am not going to go. Escalator. Hey, hey, relax, man. One of one of our friends, Greg Braggs, actually did get hurt on the escalator. Oh, I didn't so, know that. Well, then I, I, I retract. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, you know, yeah. Yeah. You know, we're, we're hoping for Greg to, you know, he didn't get seriously hurt, but he did get hurt. So was uh, it on the second or third floor? I thought it was on the third to the second. I, I don't know what floor it was. I just know that escalator collapse. And me personally, who've seen right. one happen at, at Clemente when I was working there, it is not a pretty or scary. I mean, it's a very scary thought and a, a sight because you can't right. control it. Fast. Yeah, it was. They, they, I was listening to on the, on the ESPN. They were talking about it, and essentially, it was just sped up like a crazy fast speed, and like there was elderly people, and yeah, it was. It was. It was not good. It was not good. Not at all. And it's not good, just like, you know, the Chicago Cubs lost to Milwaukee Brewers up there north. And I, I called it the sausage uh, series because uh, <laughs> they did not meet. They didn't win that race. No, you know, they didn't. They were the bratwurst that got left behind, you know, that rolled under the seat and just didn't make it. So nah, that was um, that was that was the sausage fest because we all got fucked <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Eleven and a half games out of first place, seven games under 500. Uh, it's, they're five games back on the third wild card spot, but there's wasn't, like eight. wasn't the last time they played the Brewers, they were only like three games back, and that was for first place. Wasn't that like a month ago? What the hell happened? Uh, June that, happened. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, I, this, June. This is this, yeah. this is this is the, the the thing I have a problem with, right? We we looking at these comments that we got on the, on this show today, right? We got Izzy, man. He's the most optimistic dude I've ever seen since C Red yeah. Fred. Right there, he goes again. Craig Council is correct as far as being patient, bro. It is July. It's about to be the 4th of July. The season is halfway over. The Cubs are not coming back stronger. This is this is the problem is that and, and look, I'm look, I'm glad. I'm very, <laughs> glad I'm very glad that you're watching the show and you're commenting. I'm, I'm yeah. I, we appreciate your feedback. But at you. the same time, here's the problem. You are a fan that's a problem. And what I mean by that is that every time you hear Craig Council in there, he's Patrick Williams, right? 
well, you know, we we should we should probably play better. We could do better. Set Dan's V Swanson. It's only June. Only June. You could say that in I don't know May, April. Don't tell me it's only June when you are you're on a losing streak. You can't hit the ball. You sit there and you see, oh look, a ball is coming towards me. Better go the other way. Like what kind of shit? Is, that's how you play baseball. Try now, to get some and that's I'll see, I'll defend him on this one. one. Nah, because Jed Hoyer's doing the same shit. Jed Hoyer, uh, uh, Jed Hoyer, Dansby Swanson. I mean, nobody has no damn fight. Nobody's pissed off. I, at, at the very I disagree. Steel. J- uh, Steel. Uh, Justin Steele, Justin Steele got pissed. Okay, and you saw it. Like I, one, one out of twenty-seven, or wh- however many you put on the damn. Look, but here's the thing, I, I agree with. You. It's frustrating as hell. It is. I I'm used to have the Cubs bad. poster right up back behind me, and bad. I took it off. I can't look at it in the morning before I leave. Bad. I had to put it down. I just noticed that. Wow. Yeah, I had to put it down. I, I it just I put it I put it in the corner and turned it around for a little bit because I'm that angry. It's like looking in the mirror. I can't look at it. Like you know. <laughs> <laughs> but my point being, yeah, is the, the fact is, like, I get it. I am positive. I want to believe that they're going to go on a seven-game win streak. And and I hope it happens, but I'm 50-50. And that's okay. I'm that fan, right? I'm a believer. Like, I'm the truck song. I'm a believer. Yeah. I'm going to see her if I try, right? I, it's just like I'm optimistic that they have the, – on paper, they look great hitting-wise, but they're not doing it. Dansby Swanson, he's going to be here for a while because he signed seven years. And that's he's Jason, on two. That's Jason huh? Hayward 2.0. Right. Jason Hayward 2.0. But Jason came yeah, with Jason clutch Jesus. moments. I don't see a lot of clutch moments yet with Dansby so far. But again, it's hard to feel for this Cubs team. And it drives me mad when I see them up. And then I see the opposing team scores and they're tied. And then they lose. Like it's. It's frustrating. I Let hate me tell it. You about a little story about the Chicago White Sox. No one cares. And if you want to talk about them, I'm going to talk about us. No, what I'm saying is that's exactly the same thing. The White Sox will be up in the first three, four innings. They'll be up, you know, three zero, and then you're like, oh, the bullpen's coming in. It's T-ball season. Well, that's how I've been winning money lately. But yes, <laughs> Nico, Horner, sure. Nico Horner let off Sunday's game with a home run. Uh-huh. Right, and he did it also the with the San Francisco boy. Giants. That was the entire scoring of the entire game. They lost seven to one. Think mm-hmm. about that. They had two hits on the day, and one of them was the first home run, first batter of the game. What kind of bullshit is that? It's no, a- and I hear you, and I'm not agreeing. Like it's like saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying, like, so I don't know what's going to change. And I think if at the trade deadline you're going to see Belly gone because they're going to try to get something for him. I at least if it goes that bad. Try to get something out of nothing. Uh, rumor is belly to Atlanta on a trade proposal. The Cubs would require J.R. Ritchie, catcher Drake Balden, left-hander Dylan Dodd, and outfielder Jesse Franklin the fifth in exchange for Bellinger. That's a lot. And that's I, probably because Bellinger would opt in at the, at the end of his first year contract. Right. I'm yes. not I'm not opposed to that. I think that's a good deal. Yeah, because he can play the outfield. They're missing an outfielder right now. Uh, and and then and they have uh they have a first baseman who and can- also the catcher thing I need because uh-huh. Jan Gomes ain't hitting man he's not he's that gone not on the team bro oh sorry that's why he's not hitting because he's not on the team yeah well exactly that's what I'm saying Jan Gomes where was he he was there last season but he's not here now wasn't yeah. hitting what right now yeah he got let go a couple couple weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, the so. issue with the Cubs is, you know, they started hot with an April of 17 and 10. Then in May, they went eight games under 500 with 10, 18. And then June 11 and 16. And so far, they're in the month of July. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't got to July yet, but that's because they haven't. No, you know, they they haven't it just started to- tomorrow. They'll play. They'll so play this, tomorrow. No, they don't they play tonight against the Phillies and going to lose that shit? No, tomorrow. No, it's day tomorrow. Well, so, there was only three MLB games today. Well, all right, let's let's go to the party on the the south side for Dodgers uh, uh, White Sox. Uh, let me. T- oh, well, yeah, Dodgers White Sox. Yeah, I was there on Wednesday. It was a great time. What party was it? It was like uh, Mexican yeah. Hinge and Hispanic Hinge over there, huh? It was, it was a Mexican heritage night. And uh, let me just tell you, <laughs> there was a lot of Mexicans there. Yeah, a lot of Hinge <laughs> options. That's for sure. They, uh, they did a great market. No, I mean, seriously. 
I, I making you we have the biggest Polish community and they have they had about 22 24,000 the night before and then you get the Mexican Heritage night and it jam packed the house we had over 36,000 okay why are we not catering and doing everything we can to get these two ethnicities to jump in and support this team on a night like basis and make it filled up like Wrigley Field where no one cares about the product but everyone's having a great time and every you know what you know what you know they're what they're gonna add they need, they're they're gonna need, they need four things, okay? <laughs> Tisky, yes, Morello, yes, and per- pierogi tacos. Bro, make tacos with pierogies inside. I'm That's in. it, bro. You're good. I'm in. So I'm get in. out there, man. Uh, uh, all I'm saying is my joke is like I'm saying yeah, because of the fact that everyone that I saw posting on that night was like, I'm gonna meet myself. Uh, a boyfriend a that girl, night, yeah, a, toxic yeah. Or a toxic girlfriend, yeah, yeah. That's and funny. I was like laughing because that's funny, like that. You like, should have went then. I'm not going. You you're wouldn't toxic. catch me there, huh? <laughs> you should have went. You could have found somebody. You're toxic. No, I, oh yeah, yeah, I am. I <laughs> totally am. So I mean, you know. <laughs> oh man! Well, we yeah. started the show. This was filled, and now because the whole time you were talking about the bull segment, I'm like, well, I'm just gonna keep drinking then. Yeah, no water on the weekend for you. Uh, no water yeah. ever. No, just kidding. No, uh, during the weekdays from between eight to five, um, I'm drinking water. Aquafina is a sponsor brought to you by. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wish. Uh, no, I, I wish. wish the worst water. <laughs> I know because I'm the worst person. I'm toxic. That's why I said Aquafina. Um, water is sponsored by. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> if you want something that tastes like shit, drink Aquafina. No, yeah. I. I just thought it was I thought it was funny that uh, everyone's making those uh, videos, TikTok, Instagram for that night. Uh, did you get the jersey? I want to know if you got. I do have the jersey. I was I was I got I got in there early. I snuck in early and I uh, was able to get secure a jersey. Uh, had a good time. Did uh, you wear it? Uh, no, because I was wearing my Otani jersey. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I wore my Mets. I had my Mexican heritage. I don't have it on today. Mexican heritage white socks hat, so it's under the brim. It has the sarape mm-hmm. and it had the same colors. And yeah. then I wore my Otani jersey because I was uh, sitting six rows up from first base side. So I, I knew saw that was awesome. He was I'm able, glad you I had a good to, time because you know he's gonna bat like six times against the White Sox. And you did know, he? he? Yeah, he hit a home run. You know, he hit a bomb. Um, anyways, the White Sox finally won a series since April against the uh the Rockies and the last time they won one was in uh April against uh, the Rays I believe. Uh Chaker. So, Yeah, yeah. You know, we're 30 games under 500. Uh we suck. There's going to be a fire sale. Uh we had 15 teams calling about crochet. 15 that's more than half the league. I want I want the Cubs calling. to be one of those callers. I'm no, desperate have, now. You you the Cubs are not doing that. I'm desperate. I need you. I need you, Cub fans, to put this out in the universe and manifest that that, that happens. The Cubs are not. The Dodgers made an offer. The White Sox balked on it. I'm sorry. I just said no. He said I need you, Cub fans, to do that thing that he said. And I said no. Oh. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, I said nice, Cub fans. Oh no, no, no. Uh, Crochet is making eight hundred thousand this year and is under team control f- on through twenty twenty six. So that's why he is very sought after. Though here's the issue. He had surgery last year on his on his elbow, Tommy John. Uh, you know, he's supposed to only pitch 100 innings. He's already surpassed that. So how much are they going to push him on the White Sox? When are you going to shut him down? Are you just going to trade him? I mean, he would give you the biggest haul back. It's just really, do you have the balls to do it? And I think Chris Getz is going to try to establish himself as a GM and being bold. And saying I'm putting my stamp on this team, even though this is a great player, this is going to elevate us a lot quicker to our rebuild. Um, yeah, like I said, he's already pitched over 100 innings, um, 28 more than his entire career with the White Sox. I'm I I love him. I rather keep him and build around him with the rest of the pitchers that we have in the minor leagues that are coming up. They've been really good for us. Uh, two of them have came up this uh, past week and they've been p- pitching pretty well. You need pitching to start with, and then we'll work on the hitting afterwards. You can go different ways. I know the Cubs did it backwards where they, you know, they developed a lot of hitters and fielders and then bought pitching, and that's how they won their championship. There is no perfect formula. So I really, really wish they kept them. Go ahead. He's, he's 25 years old. Okay. He's only 25 years old. 
Now, this is what's going to happen. Is Tell that me. They, they will trade him, not this year. If they're smart, you hold on to this guy because you're going to have to essentially do the same thing you did with Chris Sale, where you sit there and trade him when he's – because you're not – you're nowhere near a contender after no. what happened last year when everyone thought, oh, my God, this is the sweetheart team, this is the team, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, that didn't work out. Half the team is gone now, okay? The other players that you got left, I mean, who – you got Lou Bob, right? You got, and you, got, you, got trade, you got yeah. and you got and you got crochet the, the two biggest trade pieces you got there right and mm -hmm. w the one other guy what um um the kickboxer oh, yeah, tommy, tommy fam should get traded uh, uh yeah, paul de jong should get traded yeah paul de jong yeah, so, be traded yeah um you, well, I mean, uh, you got you got Eric little Freddy. you got a couple of of these pieces but the two guys that i mean lou bob i mean hitting is is easy to trade or i i, I guess i mean so is pitching but what i'm saying is that the reason why you don't trade uh, uh crochet right now is because you're going to need him in a couple of years to trade for hey some guy that's just about to hit the majors and you need to fill that slot. I need a, a third baseman, Moncada. I need a first baseman, you know, what was it, Wallace and Gromit looking off? Um, like, <laughs> you need someone to put and you on. That, yeah, yeah, Wallace, like I said. Um, you need to, to you, you're going to need that, that trade piece that's going to bring you a couple players that are getting ready to pop in the majors. And and that's the smart thing to do because you tried it before. Oh, look, it's Wallace and I Gromit. was there. Uh, I was there when you got that. <laughs> I was present. Those big dead eyes. It's so creepy. <laughs> God damn. Beady. Exclamation. Oh, hey, my so, God. so so what one thing I want to mention today, today is Bobby Bonilla Day. So he's getting his uh his one yeah, point was at 1.19 million until he's like 79 years old. Um, but that's Ken not Griffey even Ken, Ken Griffey's getting some money too, I think, from the Reds. But I'm <laughs> you're you mentioned Otani, and I just want to put it out there again. <laughs> I want to put that out there again. Is that for the next like however many years he's only making 20 million? So the, the deferrals, and I put this note specifically, the deferrals which total. The, the deferral total, $680 million will begin in 2034 and carry on for nine years until 2043. Starting in 2034, Otani will receive $68 million per year from the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. the, but that can you imagine what the salary cap is going to be at that point? That is not even going to matter. Oh my goodness! I mean, oh, I'm not even that. gonna have enough to buy lunch the next day. That's right? pretty much <laughs> like I'm trying to get some of them pierogi tacos, and I can't afford that shit. <laughs> no, you're not even gonna be able to go to the ballpark at that point. Yeah, yeah. he better owe sixty-eight million dollars a year. A beer is gonna cost twenty-five dollars by years. then. It, it's it's insane. Hey, they're kicking the can down the road. They're saying we're trying to win now, and whoever buys this team at that point. You got to pay the bill. You're stuck with the bill. They're, they're dining and dashing. That's what they're doing. They're eating all the good food and poof, I'm out. You know who else and is doing the that? Who's paying the bill. You know who else is doing that is the owner of the Celtics because they just gave out all these contracts and just like, guess what? We're selling right now. They're selling shit right now. They're like, you get a contract. You get a contract. I'm getting out of here. Yep. Oh, man, that's some wild shit right there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Robert, uh, looks like the Philadelphia Phillies are kicking the tires on uh, Robert. Uh, they would love to have him. You know, uh, you got Bryce Harper, you got uh, you got Schwarber, uh, Schwarber out there. Um, they're, they're, that'd be deadly. That'd be that'd be deadly. There. And then he's protected by some boppers in between, or doesn't you know have to be the main guy? And I think right. that's what he really, need, really needs. He can focus on playing great center field. And that'd, just, that'd be great. I'd like to see that honestly. Great. I think that would be a great spot for him. Do him the favor. Do him right. the favor and trade him over to a contender. I think the Phillies are one of the contenders to, right. to the Dodgers uh, yeah, when it comes to Phillies, the NL. If you, you got the Phillies. You got Atlanta, who's always dangerous. Yep. And you got the Dodgers. That's that's the whole National League right there. Oh, absolutely. Brewers, Everyone. And Brewers San Diego the is there, but you don't know exactly what's going to happen. They have great moments, and then they have other moments where it's like they don't look so great. So. San, San Diego is uh, <laughs> a whale's it's, vagina. It's, it's, a um, <laughs> it's a collector. It's a soreness that uh, Big Z feels for that because no. he doesn't like them at all. So. I don't mind San Diego. There's nothing wrong they're, with San Diego. They're just, they're, they were a collector. They collected great players, but they never put it together. Yeah. 
They do that every San Diego. San Diego. <laughs> yeah, so vagina. Wheels vagina. Uh, so the proposed trade would bring uh, shortstop Aiden Miller, right-handed pitcher Mick Abel, shortstop Brian Rincon, and right-handed pitcher George Klassen. Again, I've always been about prospects are suspects. I would have rather go to a proven player, but in the fact that we have to rebuild, and uh, you know, and if one of those guys hits, I think it's well worth it. You gotta be, you gotta be excited about bringing in a guy named Rincon. Hey, man. Hey, we're gonna hit the baseball, man. Oh man, Ozzy would love that guy. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, they'd be best friends. They'd be texting every night. Oh, you going Mimi's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Class and Rincon would be the ones that would be coming up pretty soon. They're about two years away with superstar potential. Uh, and then the rest of them would just see what they fill out to. But, again, baseball sucks in Chicago, and uh, <laughs> there's nothing we can do about it. That's why when JC invited us earlier today to go to a Cubs game on the 4th of July, and he said it's 80 bucks, I said you can go kick rocks. And I want to go tomorrow for the Captain America hat because I'm that Marvel then nerd. Then go. Well, I'd have to take a half day because leaving from Wellington Heights at five, getting there, I get there right at seven. I got to get there by at least five. There's, there's no way I'd be able to get that hat. So I'll par- probably buy it on eBay. So why don't you just take a full day and still get paid and then go to the Cubs game? Uh, because they need me, Big Z. They need me there. So oh God, let's ask your dad. Oh, <laughs> funny you see that. let's bring up uh, Sal to welcome to the show. Sal. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, he, he, uh, like right now, he'd be two drinks in uh, with uh, Smirnoff and Seven Up. So That's it'd be perfect. funny. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. The, the, uh, yeah. So uh, I'll walk down the street and go hit him up. Yeah. He'd be like, hey, do you want some of this? Oh, my you know, God. It sounds like he drank it already. <laughs> Shit. I mean, I I I tapped it. So That's it's yeah, it, look, I mean, I seen you drink. I don't think y'all share. That's the problem. You know what? I don't. Well, I'm not a good share. I'll just mostly take it and be like, oh, whoops, I, I guess I owe you another one. So <laughs> he is an, he, he's an only child. He doesn't know how to share. He's like, I bought you a beer. Mind if I borrow this beer? <laughs> <laughs> I did see one from my grandfather, which is his dad, uh, not too long ago. So <laughs> keep it in the family, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll take a short, quick break. Uh, boys, you want to do uh, Stirring the Pot or you want to do What You're Watching when we come back? Doesn't matter. We could do Stirring the Pot. I don't mean yeah, what you're watching. I don't, I don't know. I have All stuff. I could just name list things, so it doesn't matter. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, we'll come back after a word from our sponsors. <laughs> oh, my God, you guys. Hey, true Chicago sports fans, show off your Chicago pride with some fresh clothes from Grit Clothing Company. Grit Clothing Company. At Grit Clothing, they create that simple yet classic style that represents that Chicago Southside lifestyle. From t-shirts to hoodies, hats to glassware, they've got you covered. <laughs> Grit has everything you need to represent your Chicago pride. So do it right now. Check out gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15. TRUEFAN15. For 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15% off your entire order. Let me say it again. That's gritclothingco.com and use the promo code TRUEFAN15 for 15% off of your entire order. What up? It's Martin Moreno, and you are listening to True Chicago Sports Fans Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast. And uh, if you're a regular of the show, you know what time it is. It's Uh-oh. time. Yeah, that's right. It is time for Stirring the Pod. All right. All right. What do you guys got? Because uh, I, 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 my last one was a dud. <laughs> all right. Let's see what you're watching. Ah. Uh- <laughs> No. What was what was your last one? It, well, I was talking about like summer fruit and like what kind of summer fruit do you like to enjoy it during the summer and do you put anything into it? And JC was just continuously putting liquor into his fruit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was else? actually drinking margaritas here for JC tonight. So you know, there's tahine, there's like all the Mexican fruit you get in a cup. You put different variation stuff in there, you know, to make it fun. But, uh, you know, he kept putting liquor. He kept putting vodka and stuff like that. You you put too much time into that Mexican night at uh <laughs> over yeah, at, definitely. That's the problem. That's what you're like. I put tahine. I put this thing over here, man. I put boy, a lot. Yeah, it's a yeah. Dodgers game. Yeah, yeah. it's right, fool. Dodgers. Uh, Dodgers. Fool. Let's go. Sir, you got to stop working. 
No. I, I, go, ahead. I, I, go ahead, Iraq. Oh, Iraq, you had the stirring the pot? Oh, well, shit. I mean, you put me on the spot. I mean, I gave you 90 <laughs> seconds. 90 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> When is when is ninety seconds oh, ever been enough for me to talk? I, about I, I let you walk into that one. <laughs> what the fuck is ninety seconds never enough for me. I'm I'm old and lazy. Okay, ten. Uh, <laughs> all right, we don't have to do that. We can do what you're watching. I can all right, tell you what, what, you're what you're watching. All right. Right. what are you watching? That is in sports. So the boys. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know if you've yes. been catching up on it uh, this season. I feel like the first couple of episodes, they're great, but they're not what we're used to. The fourth mm-hmm. episode was amazing, dark, uh, fantastic dark. with Homelander. Um, it is a little different. I, I, I do feel something different about that, um, but I'm still enjoying it at the same time. I need to catch up on the HBO series um, with uh, the Game of Thrones spinoff, House of Dragons. Oh, House of Dragons. Pretty good so far, man. Pretty good. Just finished yeah, watching this I, episode. I think I need I need a notebook because I need to write everyone's names down because I am getting so lost and confused. It's like yeah. a family tree. And yes. then I see the breakdowns. You need, you, need to, you need to print out a map. Yes. You print out a map of all the family and put the family trees. You definitely need to do that. And I've seen Game of Thrones like maybe like four or five times the entire series. And I still do not know where every family is at on the map and all that stuff. No, so, and, and I need a damn, I need the uh, closed caption on to understand what the hell they're talking about. Yes. Anyway, uh, I mean, uh, yes. I we definitely so put I, the closed caption. I, I got a question though. Is this House of Dragons, is, is this still in Westeros or is this some, I, yes. I, haven't, I yes. haven't been able to watch that. It is I, still in I, Westeros. It's a prequel. It's about 200 years before. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So I need to catch up on that. Uh, and that's been pretty much it. I mean, oh. I'm watching a stupid show, uh, Smiling Friends, um, which is on HBO, and both of you uh, probably wouldn't be into it. It's oh. like a it's a dumb cartoon for HBO, but it's well written. But you got to have my kind of sense of sense of funny. What is it like South Park funny? Uh, it's a cart. Like no. A- not really. It's not even Rick and Morty. It's this company of a cartoon guys that uh, go on service calls to make people smile. And the first episode of this guy that wants to blow his brains out and he has to teach them why he shouldn't blow his brains out and tries to go in, into the world and show him what makes smiling. And it goes wrong until finally like the end of it. So it, it's funny. I think it's funny, but, you know, it is what it is. Here, here's, here's two things. All right. Number one, I, I for several years did service calls in people's homes to make yep. them smile. Yep. And number two, I tend to partake in activities where shit like that sounds probably hilarious. So don't you fucking judge me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is right up Erock's ass. He probably wrote this wrong? shit. Well, well to wrong? me, I feel like Erock doesn't like, like cartoons. Uh, yeah, he does. What? You you he's you you been to my house, bro. I got oh my. Marvel God. is great. No, like, he likes He Man. He likes all the old school cartoons. Guy. Yeah, but this literally, is new cartoons. It's not like old school. That, he's just, he's sitting right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> he's chilling. You know what I? You know what I recently found about this, which is super dope. I haven't confirmed. Why does he have pants on? Because yes, he does. <laughs> because Eddie doesn't have pants on. They're not. That's pants. true. We just saw. They're panties. They're not, they're just pieces of fun. No. So, um, I, I, I haven't completely confirmed this with the person, but, um, my understanding is one of the guys that I currently work with was the one that came up with the mechanical design for this mech in here, where you, when you strike, oh, the, this one's broken, it's really old, but when you would hit, this is the battle armor he man. So when you struck, oh, struck the chest, it was roll up and it would show like damaged plastic. And when you hit it again, it would just like the little logo here. So I just found out that the one of the guys I work with, one of our higher ups, made this mech. He was the creator of this thing. I got to If it's true, this Are is you gonna my. Have him sign it. Eighty-four. Yeah, I'm gonna sign it right here. No, have him sign it. Yeah. Right, there. right there. That's the biggest I'm part. Yeah. Uh, I, have him fix it. Have him fix it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Effective. Is he the one that says I have the power, or is that the? I have the power. The... Yeah. Yeah. That's that's he man. Okay, see, I knew it. Okay, I'm on there. It, yeah, I, I, I have I have the battle armor He Man Funko Pop. <laughs> I got it. I bet you do. Oh, I'm sure. 
Um, <laughs> what are you watching, you rock? I'm, I'm watching, um, it's a show that's been on for probably, probably about two months now. It comes on Tuesdays. It's called Dinner Time, Dinner Time Live with David Chang. It is a live show on Netflix. It comes around. Uh, our local time is about 4 p.m. And out there, it's about, no, our local time is 6 p.m. In L.A., where it's filmed, it's on at 4. But basically, a celebrity chef, David Chang, who has a couple of different shows on Netflix. He did Ugly Delicious. Um, and so basically, he he has a kitchen studio. It's like a home kitchen where he has two celebrity guests every week. Um, right before the NBA Finals, he had uh, Mark Jackson and Reggie Miller with the trophy behind them. It's he's had um, like John Mulaney and and um, Nick Kroll and like just a lot of comedians on there. And he basically just cooks uh, for them. Terry Crews was on a couple of times. He he actually uh, David Chang injured his back, and Terry Crews and I forget who else cooked for him. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it was really cool. So you see him literally a lot of it is just him kind of cooking on the fly. They kind of think about the menu. They ask the guests like, hey, what do you like? What do you don't like? So they had like the all meat episode. They had the vegetarian episode. They had the um, high end, low end episode where they had like Domino's pizza with caviar on it, like shit like that. So it was really, really it's so, I, I'm I, most of my most. If you ever look at my TikTok, it's always music and cooking. Uh, so that's what it is. Um, but two shows that I, I do need to uh, catch up on is number one, The Boys, and number two, The Bear. The Bear, I have not watched yet. All of the I, I finished I it. I finished it as well. Yeah. Uh, I that that's probably the show that I was going to talk about was The Bear and The Boys. Yeah. Uh, the Bear, um, I thought it was above average this season. I didn't think it was great. Um, it's a lot of uh, flashbacks, a lot of backstory. So if they're you know gonna set up the next season, I get it. That's how the, you you reset a season. Um, tons of cameos, you know, John tons, Cena. Yeah, yeah, John Cena. You know, you 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 couldn't see him. You just saw his sneakers. Um, the boys, I really do enjoy. Um, I just it's well written. It's just off the books. Uh, what's the name of the character that uh, he's running the boys right now? Uh, what do you mean, the English guy or uh, no. the um, Madam Milk? Meta Milk, yeah, and every every episode or just about every other scene, he changes his shirts and he has a different hip hop shirt every single time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You yeah. yeah. go from Wu Tang to DMX. So that's yeah. what they call Eminem. Yeah, I just yeah. I, I love that about him where he does that. I think that's just super cool. Um, and then lastly, I've been watching Who Killed WCW. It's a documentary on uh, YouTube uh, from the guys from Vice and uh, the Dark Side of the Ring. Um, this is produced by Dwayne Johnson and his partner. Uh, what is her name? Something Garcia. Um, Maria. No, no, no. I can't remember her name. So whatever. It's a seven bucks production. Anyways, <laughs> uh, it's been pretty good because it talks about, you know, the toxic nature of WCW and, and uh, you know, get firsthand accounts of what happened down there and how that you know, that whole thing. Died. But um, it's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Yeah. That's about not it. really. I mean, it's been like kind of like low key because uh, oh, it's summer. So I finished Acapulco the the last season. What is it? Season four already. I and that's uh, for me that that show is hilarious. It's super hilarious, and it's you know family kind of family based. Uh, multi millionaire that you know comes back and talks to his grandson about his time at the resort and working as a towel boy and moving up. So uh, definitely something to watch on. Uh, that's Apple. something you could relate to working as a towel boy. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I knew it. I, w I watched a couple episodes over the weekend of uh, Worst Roommate Ever. You guys ever watch that show? No. It's it's documentary, essentially, and it's like true crime. And it's basically like two people living together and one of them, you know, tries to kill the other one or whatever it is. But you don't. Yeah. And, it's, you know, what I mean, or, or like people just in general. And it, most of the time it's about trying to collect a life insurance policy or some shit oh, like that. Damn. So like <laughs> we, were, we were best friends for 20 years and then. He tried to kill me. <laughs> like shit. Well, maybe like that. me and Sean will be on that one. <laughs> I'm gonna have to buy insurance on Sean. <laughs> maybe. <Yeah>. Maybe. <laughs> I just I, I I I had a I had brief contact with Sean today for the first time in, in fucking forever because he posted something about Domino's having a, a Chicago style tavern pizza. And oh, he was like, pizza. Pizza that? Pizza that. yeah, whatever. And I was like, have you tried it? Because I mean, like, I feel like if you're out of town. And that's all you can get. I mean, I, I you might give it a whirl. I mean, they, they have the Detroit style. They have the New York shit slices where they're just floppy bullshit. Uh, it's like floppy hat day at Pizza Pizza Hut. 
And I was like, give it, give it a shot. And then, and it was weird because I, and then the post was gone on Facebook. I was like, oh, weird. oh well then you should text them then say he what happened. Me, well, he like deleted it. They're like, it was really weird. I was like, did they come after you? Like what's happening here? <laughs> the pizza Hut people went after him. I mean, there's one not too far from us. So I would assume yeah, that's probably what happened. Yeah. yeah. Is that, is that one still there? There was that, was that on, uh, no, North you're talking Avenue. about uh, Western North Avenue. That one got torn down and they put one um about on, on North Walmart. Avenue. It's next to a subway and a GameStop yeah, before next Western. A GameStop. No, he yeah. doesn't he's not familiar with that. Though next to the Walgreens. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. It's in between California oh, and Shell? Western. It's a Shell. building and it's a Walgreens, and that's right next there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't come down to 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 like yeah, he, he, as much as he used to. No, I yeah. get you. No, I'm I'm driving out. Wingstop and Jimmy John's. That's by First Avenue and Irving Park by you. So th- that's the one <laughs> that you know. <laughs> hey, no. well, I, yeah, I, I, you know what? I got a I got a question for you. Do you eat when do you do you eat Wingstop? No, no, not really. You know, I like Buffalo I mean. Wild Wings more than that. But I'm just saying, like so. I I've been I gave him a shot a couple of times. I would get the the boneless wings. It's real greasy. Then mm-hmm. then. I my my daughter she's like I really want wing stop. It was after a practice. I'm like as long as you're eating. So I took her over there and I was like, you also have to order like 45 minutes in advance, right? So because they take forever to uh-huh. give you terrible fucking food. Their fries are super salty. That's and then sick. I got the real wings and I was like, this is a rip. I'm never eating there again. It was such a rip off. It was such a. It was like 17 bucks for like 10 wings and like a bunch of salty. Yeah, fries. the meal combo is like, like almost 20 bucks. So I says I'm not. I, I can't yeah. do this. But guess what? Over here by me, they opened up a, a pollo campero. Man, I can't wait. I'm, oh, I'm excited, bro. Oh, I know. What, I know. In, what in uh, North yeah. Avenue, right in Melrose yeah. Park? Yep. You got that one. I pass that one up all the time. They have so that, and it just opened like a month ago. But they got so many chicken places because you got that. You got Chick Fil A. You got Canes right down the street. A KFC's down the street there, and Brown's Chicken is over here too. There's yeah, that one, like yeah. just when we need another chicken place. You know what I said? Man, shut the fuck up, man. We, we, you can never have enough chicken. No, you man. can't. That's correct. I'll go, man. I, now I want some jewel fried chicken. Now, jewel chicken is the best. No, I, uh, I don't fresh. know. Today fresh. on Monday, you go, you go there on Monday, get a fresh batch, six, six bucks. Yeah, get the That's meal for fourteen. Yep. Get the meal for you. Get two two giant sides, the bread and a pop. Come on, yep. can't beat that. Nope. All right, boys. Uh, we are at our time, and it's time to go. I want to thank Mike Logic for jumping on today for the NBA talk. Uh, it was amazing. Love to hear from Mike Logic. Please go listen to Mike Logic's music. M I C. Do it. Do it. M I C L O G I K. <laughs> the way it sounds is the way it's spelled. I don't, I don't uh, no. after me. I don't mean it's a uh, gimmick infringement and stuff like that. I don't want to be uh, sued. Oh, oh, that ain't a gimmick. That's just letting y'all know. <laughs> uh, y'all know the name M I C L O G I K dot bandcamp dot com. Go check them out. Yeah, check them out everywhere. Uh, e Rock, thanks for joining us. It's always a good time when you jump on when you can. I know you're doing your thing, being a great dad for your daughter. I know softball has been consuming your life for the past uh, year and a half or something like that. It's been, I don't even know. A lot, a lot, hey, but but here's the thing: a lot of uh, a lot, a lot of hard work, a lot of uh, winning. She's been doing good. The team's been doing good. Great Great memories. Well, I tell you what, though, I I will, I will knock them on this, man. They won the Mother's Day tournament a few weeks ago, Father's Day tournament. They were up eight to two, and they end up losing. And I says, look, I guess y'all just love your moms more than your dads. I guess that's how. Your mom's gonna have to drive you to the next tournament. How about that? (laughs) New new seasons coming up. They just had tryouts. uh, What last? last wednesday so uh just running it back and uh yeah so I- i'll come on when i can and uh probably probably next time you see me it'll be with a bear's head on because that might be the next time i'm free <laughs> yeah. there we go there we go all right stevie b tell them about no water in the weekend yeah a new episode is out today uh you can go check it out anywhere you listen to podcasts um this one is funny uh always funny uh the trivia topic oh, is famous cartoon cats uh, name the top yeah. 10 famous cartoon cats out there. That's what Sean is tested on. And it's 50 50, pretty much. Uh, you guys go listen to it, judge him on I, that. The cat. Yeah. It's the, the cat from Heathcliff. Heathcliff. Yeah. It is was that on there? There was a bunch of cats in Heathcliff, wasn't there? Yeah. yeah. Heathcliff, Garfield. 
Oh yeah, you got that, Felix. Yeah, that's another one. Felix, yep. Um, but yeah, so go check that out. See how Sean does uh, and other fun things. We talk about the Acolyte series and how much I do not like it. But go ahead and uh, check that out. Not gonna watch that uh, Acolyte series, but uh, okay. Um, no, definitely go, gonna listen to that tomorrow on the way to work. Uh, also dropped a new episode of Imposicated uh, this week. Uh, we have uh, Charlie Wilson Jr. He is a comedian. Uh, he was on one of Mikey O's show that I was able to see. Uh, funny, funny dude. We talk about his uh, transition from L.A. to Chicago and being moving around. And uh, he's been all over the world for the past three weeks. So you can find Charlie Wilson TV on Instagram and uh, you find the show on uh, YouTube. So uh, go ahead and give it a listen, give it a watch and uh, subscribe and share. So uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you to my co-host today. It was a lot of fun. Episode 201, which is under construction, just like the Kennedy. That's good. That's our baseball teams. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, there you go. 294, too, man. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Friday, an hour and 30 minutes to get home. But yeah. Yeah. Doing 80 on the 94. Shout out to Mike Logic for that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, to our thank you to our sponsors, 606 Media, True Chicago Sports Fans, and Great Clothing Company. Uh, go over there and check out uh, our gear. You know, it's pretty cool. It gives a little in our pocket. We can pay for stuff. Yeah, do us a little favor. Uh, <laughs> check us out on social, social media. Uh, we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on EG, Spotify, TikTok. We're on all that. So you can find us. Uh, you want to email us a uh, certain pot or a show, true Chicago sports fans at gmail.com. And uh, for E Rock and Stevie B, I am Big Z, and I'll see you next time for episode 202. And until then, be good to each other for the love of sports. Swish. That's what I was waiting for.